Good morning. Come, let's arise. The Lord will fulfill his purpose in each one of your lives. Can I hear an amen for that? You know why I said that? Because God spoke to Isaiah. He says, every word that I have spoken shall not return back to me void. But it will fulfill his purpose for which it is sent. That's why one more time I repeat, the Lord will fulfill his good purpose in each one of your lives. Come, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time you've given us, Lord. We all have gathered here as one family to honor you and give you praise because we are chosen. We are the royal priesthood, a holy nation. In order to give you praise, you have chosen us from the power of darkness to a marvelous light. Thank you, Lord, for this time. We give you thanks for all that you are doing in our lives. Continue to bless us and lead us. We give you all the glory and praise. And all God's children say, Amen. Over to the worship team. Give them a hand. Thank you. Good morning, church. Are we ready to praise God? Yeah.
Father, we pray, God, that as we continue to worship you, God, in this place, Lord, come, God, come and be the center here, Lord, center of our attention, God. You have all of our attention right now, Father. You take away all distractions, God. You are worthy to be praised, Father. Right here, right now, God, we want to honor you, Father. Jesus be the same. 
Strengthen us, O Lord. Empower us by the power of your Holy Spirit, Master. Thank you, Jesus. In this world, there are many troubles. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit sustain us, O Lord. Strengthen us, O Master, when we walk through the valley of the shadow, Master. Let your Holy Spirit empower us. Help us to overcome. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So many challenges. But thank you for your promise. You never left us alone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You walk before us and you are a God who makes all crooked paths straight. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for being in the center of our life, being in the center of our family, being in the center of our job, being in the center of our health. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All glory. Thank you, Master. Oh, glorious, bless each one of us here, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do not be anxious about nothing. Thank you, Lord. God is setting someone free in this place. The spirit of anxiety is removing it right now in the name of Jesus. He's filling your hearts with his peace. 
Thank you, Jesus, for your peace. We have confidence in you, O Master. Confidence in God cancels all anxiety. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for breaking the chain of anxiety right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. No more fear. No more fear. You have never blessed us with fear, O oh Master, but you have blessed us with power, love, and sound mind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What a wonderful God we worship. What an awesome God we worship. Thank you for your great love that you've shown on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for your blood. Thank you, Lord, for your covering upon our lives. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord the clap offering. Awesome God we worship. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I call upon uh, Silas to lead us into a time of intercession. Luke 22:44 Jesus being in the garden of Gethsemane and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you, because in your Son, Jesus, you've shown us that when we are in anguish of spirit and soul, when we feel sorrowful, when we feel burdened, it's not a time to turn back but rather it's the time to seek you in prayers more earnestly. And that is what we have come together to do as a congregation this morning. We want to thank you on behalf of the church. Thank you because you are the center of the church. Thank you because everything revolves around you. Thank you because our worship is to you. Thank you because our service is to you. Thank you because you have redeemed us to yourself. Thank you because you have redeemed us for yourself. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. We thank you for the Diocese of Cochin. We thank you for the Bishop, for his family. We thank you for even his daughter Ingrid. We thank you that your hands of healing are upon her. We thank you that you are upholding the bishop and his family. And we thank you that you are upholding even our own bishop in this place. We use them as a point of contact to all leaders, the pastor, the church council, and everyone who ministers in one capacity or the other. We thank you that you're working in all these ones both to will and to do of your own good pleasure. We thank you that through them, you are steering the sheep of your church in this nation and in the nations around, and you are causing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to prevail. We give you the praise. We ask, Lord, that for all our leaders, that you will uphold them, you will deliver them from the hands of wicked and unreasonable men because not all men have faith. But we thank you because you are faithful and you are keeping them strong and firm in your love and in your word. We thank you for all congregants, all worshipers, all members, whether they are online or they are here in person, whether they've been here at a point in time or they are, you know, away 
we just thank you that right now, your spirit is at work in everyone. Thank you that you're drawing us in with the cords of your love. Thank you that for all those who have gone astray, your love is redirecting them back home. Thank you, Father, for those of us who remain, you're helping us to shine as your light, even in a dark world. We thank you. We pray, Father, even for um, all church arms, all the various departments, we pray that all these departments will only do your bidding and will glorify you. They will be led by your spirit. They will be responsive to your leading in the name of Jesus. We want to take time to pray for our mothers today. We are grateful for the gift of mothers. The Bible tells us in Proverbs that beauty is vain and that it fades. But that a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. We pray that our mothers will remain women who fear you. We pray for our young ladies and our girls that they all will grow up to be women like Deborah who will take their place in the city, in the nation and will stand for you and put the enemy in his place and judge every tongue that rises against us. And Father, we pray that our women our young girls and ladies will be role models, that they will stand out and be shining examples of what you can do with a life that is yielded to you. We pray, Father, that whatever they may be going through, that today you will send help to them and that you will continue to be their strength. We want to thank you for the world at large, your word tells us that you rule and that you reign in the affairs of men. We know that you rule and reign in the affairs of world events. We want to we remember um, Ukraine and Russia. We remember Sudan. And we just remember all nations that are in turmoil of one kind or the other. And we ask, Lord, just as your word says, that we should pray for kings. You said we should pray for all, but we should pray for kings and leaders, that we all may live peaceable lives, and that all may come to the knowledge of the truth, that there is only one God, and one man who is the mediator, Christ Jesus. And we pray that the knowledge of this truth will be distilled in the nations of the world, that the glory of Christ will cover the earth as the waters covers the sea. We pray that world leaders will come to know you. That Lord, in their sleep, in their thoughts, in all they do, you will reveal yourselves to them. And for parties that are causing conflicts and turmoils, that are fomenting trouble in nations of the world, that Lord, you will arrest their hearts just like you did Saul and converted him to Paul so that the nations of the world will know peace and not just that they will know peace and be prosperous economically but that they will indeed come to know you the prince of peace Lord oh how praying rests the weary how it changes and transforms night into day we bring our weariness and our worries and concerns before you and here is where we lay it all down. Whatever may be the heart desires of anyone that we do not know, because as our faces differ, so the thoughts and desires of our hearts. But you know every single one. So you who knows the thoughts of men, we ask that today you will intervene. You will reach out to everyone and you will meet every one of us at the point of our needs to the glory and honor of your name. We thank you, our Father, that together we are growing to become a church that is given to your word, that is given to prayers, and that is given to evangelism, that our lives proclaim Christ, our actions, our deeds, all that we do proclaims Christ to the world around us, and that by your Spirit, they all around us come to be convicted that you indeed are the one true God. We thank you that we'll continue 
to have testimonies of your goodness and faithfulness in our lives, in our nation, and in the lives of all around us. As the worship service proceeds, we thank you that you're going to speak expressly to every one of us and that our lives will not remain the same. Thank you because this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything in your name, you will hear us. And we thank you because you've heard us. We are not without help. We are not alone. You have not left us orphans. We are heard and we are helped. And for all of this, we return all the glory to you alone. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we have prayed all this and more. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you. Indeed, the Lord heard our prayer. Amen. Let's arise for the scripture reading. Let's read the scripture responsibly. It's taken from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 to 22 until the end. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. In which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison. While the ark was being prepared, in which few, that's eight persons, were brought safely to water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. With angels, authorities, and powers having been subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. Put your hands together to welcome Brother Evangelist Delphian to share the word of God today. Over to Delphian. Good morning, church. Yeah, um, let us pray before we uh, listen to the sermons. Greatly, Father, we just want to say thank you for today, where you're always in the midst of us. We pray for your church, we pray for your congregations, and every each one of us. May your spirit guide us through the sermon, give us the pure understanding of what God wanted to speak to our hearts, moreover, our mind and our soul. Pray for your servants who's going to deliver the message. God strengthen and God give wisdom. Thank you, Father. We are prepared and we are ready to listen to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Um, great need to see everyone again. Yeah. I think um, it's been a while. Um, didn't came to E2 for quite, quite long. But uh, did came when there was last two weeks when we were... Uh, having the mixed service, yeah. I remember there was the E1 and E2 in the same service as well. But suddenly, when I was given the text, it was still in First Peter. So it wasn't that far from what the context that I've been prefed two weeks ago. But to the, the topic for today, we were discussing about uh, one thing that actually what was read by Brother, Brother Charles, yeah. He was talking about... Uh, about First Peter, and it was about Christ itself. And then suddenly, I started to make a theme of it, 
We call it righteous in Christ. Uh, I do not have to read anymore because we have already read it. But I'll just come to an introduction. Through the introduction, before we started to learn more about the text itself, as an introduction, uh, First Peter focuses on the importance of believers up under unjust suffering, yeah, suffering, yet continuing to live well. And then in this way, First Peter might be called the job of the New Testament, providing encouragement for the true believer to continue on in the way that Jesus had laid out for all his followers. The endurance Peter called this believer to is similar to Job, a man who suffered despite his righteousness. Peter maintained that this was the kind of true perseverance that God expects from his people. Now we see from this context itself, it was actually the writer is Peter, the apostle of Christ, and he's also the follower of Christ. He was the among of the 12 disciples. He lived with Christ. He stayed with Christ. He even went for the mission. And he was also part of the minister where three and a half years when Christ was doing his ministry. So if we see, when we wanted to know more about the text, it is a between a student yeah, or a disciple and his pastor. You know, when that person writes about the master, it means that he has a deep relationship. He has that good connection with him. So he understands him well. So for us to know, when Peter was writing this, he focused a few things. Of course, he was talking about suffering. Yet, most churches, we still speak about suffering, but some, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. And then it talks about, uh, besides that, Peter emphasized about one thing, job. You know, not job of the work, but job of a person in the Old Testament. If you know who is job in the Old Testament, he suffers a lot. You know, we, I ever came to one of the youth ministry. I said, who wanted to be like job? You know, no one even says, I want to be like job. Some wanted to be David, you know, some wanted to be, uh, you know, but my nephew wanted to be Goliath. <laughs> he said, because Goliath is big and strong, you know, but they don't understand the scripture anyway. But after they see the story, then they started to love David. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes big, strong makes you love them, especially kids. So beware as a school teacher. <laughs> you have a task to input. So when we see that when people talk about job, no one wants to understand about job. Moreover, they don't want to be like job. But to be like Job is to face suffering. To be like Job, you need to be faithful. To be like Job, you need to know the intimacy of you and the God himself. So this is the most interesting. When Peter announced about Job, it is not a normal level of suffering. Yeah? Of course, we say that, how, how much do you suffer? Uh, just a bit, you know. How much do you suffer? Oh, drastically. How much do you suffer? Or in a high level, you know, sometimes in our life, we can define what is the level of suffering we are in. But Job, in the Bible, even he faced that suffering. He lost his family. He lost all what God has given him. And yet, he stands and says that, praise the Lord, whatever. But I want to come close to you about what is going to be in the chapter itself and also the verse. I'm only going to uh, share from verse 13 up to 17. If we see now, who is there to harm you? I highlighted it because it's just part, some part of the uh, uh, highlights for the each verses. If you are zealous for what is good, the question is, does verse 13 sound irony? You know, it looks sarcastic. Who dares to harm you? You know, that's the question. Before you enter a text, you need to understand. You need to see what is in there. And it's going to harm us, you know. I live in a good life, you know. I live in a good harmony, you know. Especially we live here. No one's going to harm you. But in certain sense, you will feel some of the harm. <laughs> yeah. Not, uh, not, you know, maybe verbally, 
maybe in terms of your mindset, it, it happens. And if we see in the verse 13 as well, it says who represents. And that who is represents. So that talks about your context, where you are now. You know, where I live now, okay? The context you are, the people you're facing every day, the people you meet every day. I know we are one of the minorities here. Everywhere you go, we are just only maybe one or two percent of the majority belief. And you have the task, yeah? That's why even when you go to a, to a place where there's a lot of community, but not all are believers of Christ. You know? For example, wherever you go, one or two percent are only one of us. And you have to be strong in the sense. And you have to understand that everywhere represents that what? There is always the people you're facing around you, your context. And who will harm? Wow. This is a, this is a bit deeper. And who is around you? And there's the mention about who will harm. In the text itself, it say, now who is there to harm you? Peter, do remind us. Who is there to harm you? Why? There's a reason to it. If you are going to be harmed, there's a reason to it. There's a reason you need to understand that why. But harm of doing what is good, this is very unfair, right? For, for a person who does good things and who will harm, it's very unfair. What is good? So when we understand what is good, you know, we always say, God is good all the time. Yeah? And I'm what again? Yeah, God is always good, no matter what. And then when there is good, the opposite is always bad. When you're doing bad, there's opposite, there's always good. <laughs> so you need to see things. Whatever you came to this world, whatever you come and see between in you or everyone among you, there's always an opposite of it. There's always another way, you know? So if you see in verse 14, But even you should suffer for righteousness sake, uh, you will be blessed. This is one of the most favorite, you know, word heard by the Christian. You will be blessed. Have no fear of them, no be troubled. You know, everyone wanted to be blessed. But the first question here is, do Christians have to suffer? You know, sometimes... People will say that, oh, it's good to be a Christian. It's always good to be a Christian. But it depends on who you're talking with. Moreover, I meet a lot of people saying that uh, when I was doing my ministry abroad, and they say like this, they tricked, it, you know, they, they tricked people around saying that if you believe in Christ, your business will be successful. Wow. So everyone thinks that going to be a Christian, you will be successful. So how many people started to follow Christ without even knowing who is Christ, without even, you know, face the situation with Christ, understanding Christ who is, or learn about Christ. So this is the situation that we will see that Christians should suffer. But we don't suffer because of we are doing, you know, the things that what we are not doing. But we suffer for righteousness sake. You know, when you're as a Christian, you suffer in a righteousness sake. Remember, I told you there's a good and the opposite is always a bad. If you do good things, of course, some people would actually suffer. Why they suffer? Because of the context you're staying in. The people who is around you and the person who you need to face or the person you need to see every day. And we don't say that, oh, it's okay, you know. Sometimes we cannot be too complacent. Yeah, complacent is a word saying that we are too relaxed in our time. We are too relaxed and we feel that, oh, everything is all right. But deeply, Christians are falling apart. One of a writer of an author, uh, George Barna, he's a writer, a theologian, who always define Christian as a frog in a kettle. Yeah, I think you have seen the clip, frog in a kettle. 
frog. It's actually they live in a. Uh, they can stay in land, and they can stay in water. And George Barnum, he's been writing a lot about what is going to happen. It seems that God is giving some prophecy to him. And he said that Christians are so complacent, and they feel that nothing will happen to them. Suddenly, they live like a frog in a kettle, and in a dead melting point, they will die in the kettle. Yeah. Yeah, you can give a try. Or if you don't want to give a try, you can see the video clip. <laughs> yeah, you can see the video clip. Then it will make you understand about it. So as a Christian, we suffer in righteousness. Sake. Righteousness is written in the Philippians 3, 9. A Greek term saying, dikai sune. Dikaios is a person who actually in righteous. And how to be righteous? How do I be righteous? You know, that's just the question. The person who can make you right is God himself. And when God makes you right or righteous in his term, that he called the Kaisune. How does it make it right? You know, when you went to a court, you met, um, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, a jury in the, in the court, in the high court. And when you are declared not guilty, you have to hit the hammer. He said that you are not guilty. Similar to God, he would judge you and say that you are right. That is the time when you feel that you're right. That is the time when God righteous fill you up. No one have ever been right. Our righteousness come from God. I love the song. It was saying just now, Jesus is always the center. No matter what, it's always the center. And remember, in righteous, then you will be blessed, no matter what. Sometimes we get confused what does blessing have to share, you know. Bless is that whatever happens to you, whatever circumstances that you're facing, you will always feel blessed. As a Christian, we are always being hopeful. As a Christian, we hope on Christ alone. That was what I said just now. Our hope is only in Christ, no matter what. So if you think that blessing is something talks about material things, that's not blessing. Blessing, of course, they come from two forms. Either it's the common grace or common bliss, or it's a blessing from above. Everyone feel blessing, why? They feel the sun. I like the song when the kids sang, thank you for the sunshine, thank you for the rain. Right? I love the song. Why? It's a blessing of common. But for us Christians, we are blessed due to specific blessing. Why specific? Because you are in Christ. You are in righteousness. The blessing for Christian is salvation. The blessing for Christian is healing, one of it. The blessing of Christian is that you are renewed. That's the blessing of Christian. So if we still see that our blessing is what the common blessing is, that means that we are not blessed truly in Christ. So remember that. Even grace, there are common grace and there are specific grace. There are two types of grace. And if we see the word of bless, in Psalms 5, 12, it says that, surely the Lord you, uh, Lord, you bless the righteous. Through the righteous, the righteous person, God will bless. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. You know, favor is one of the key words saying that we are not even qualified for it. God favor us, even we are sinners. God favor us, even though we are not righteous, but still He favor us. But that doesn't mean that we have to say that, oh, it's okay. I sin today, but God still favor me. Until when? That's the question. Until when? God favor is never ending but God give you time for it. 
never be complacent, never feel that God is always there, ready, but God has a limit in it. You know, in the world that we are facing, we call it in the post modern era, we're facing a lot of things that actually addict to us. Yeah, I can say that one of it is the digital era. You know, once if you're stuck with your phone, it can last up to one or two hours. I myself sometimes get caught up on it. And we repent. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, we, we, we sometimes when we started to see rails, you know, the famous thing like rails, you started to caught up. You caught up, you caught up, you caught up, and then you don't realize that you are two hours and three hours. And luckily, I did not download TikTok. <laughs> Even my colleague says, download TikTok, support me. No, I said, I don't want. <laughs> I have to support, but I say, no, please. Enough, I have Instagram. <laughs> Enough, I have Facebook. But the next time, I will say, no more for Instagram. <laughs> but I have to, yeah? And someone knows me what I'm doing. <laughs> I wish I would not download TikTok. Don't wish for it. But if you are into it, you know, use it as a tool to bless others. Use it as a tool to bless others, not for your own satisfaction. So the righteous, we will be blessed if we can see the Lord is always around with you and giving you favor. Not just that, he will shield you. And remember, Peter did remind in this verse, have no fear of them, no be troubled. You know, there's the coming to the question just now, who and who are them? why they need to harm you, and why Christian has to suffer. And the question is, why? It's always a why. And that why always answers that you will face them, but do not be fear or be troubled. Because if you live in righteous, if you're righteous in Christ, God will surely bless you and protect you and shield you. Well, for verse 15, in verse 15 it says, But in your hearts you honor Christ the Lord as holy. Honor the Christ as Lord as holy. And it says that always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet, you do it with gentleness and respect. You know, if we see that, the question for verse 15, what is the occasion in verse 15? It's a continuation. If we see, we started from this, um, from this uh, chapter 3. Peter was talking about husband and wife. And he was talking about love and peace. And then suddenly he started to talk about suffering in you know, in perseverance. Because why? During that time, they were facing in the, uh, in the ruling of Caesar Nero. Even you're righteous, you will never be right in front of them. Christians are persecuted. Christians are made, you know, they have to crucify you. But not like Jesus Christ will be crucified, they make you opposite of it they make you turn, turn around a bit. So those are the situation that face. But if you see, what is the occasion here is about the defending of faith. If you're talking about defending of faith, that's why I said, remember your context is very important. Your surrounding is very important. Your environment is also important as well. What do Peter remind us? Honor Christ the Lord. Do we honor Christ? The question here. Do we honor Christ? We know Christ, but do we honor Him? You know, if you want, if you honor Christ, that means you obey. If you honor Christ, means you love Christ. If you honor Christ, you put Him first before others. That is honor. But some people did not honor Christ as what is stated here. Or they said that, I know Christ, 
but this there is a statement that is this heaven meaning or what you call it a statement doesn't mean you honor or they say that i believe in christ because he he do many miracles that is just a statement but it haven't reached the level of honoring when you honor christ you put him first in every aspect in every situation in every things that you're going to face you always put christ first why we need to honor christ first then we will see what will happen next in this verse and after peter remind that he emphasized this honor christ in your heart as holy it's big deeper as holy if christ is holy if god is holy then what should we be facing we should live in holiness you can't say that i love christ but i'm not in holiness of course holiness come from the works of the holy spirit the works of god he sanctified you he purified you then you become righteous that is the work of the holy spirit but how are you going to honor christ if you are not even living in holiness you know when i read this text this is my third sermon preparation after two weeks i uh, really i have trouble of preparing this text uh, about two weeks and this was my finalized of three sermons thank god it's fruitful i make three more sermons just to prepare this you know uh, it's a struggle and if you see that as christ is holy so we as believer we as follower of christ have to live holy i don't ask you to carry the bible yeah <laughs> after this i need to be holy you know when people said hey minum kopi eh cannot i go home first i want to pray <laughs> no lah you know holiness in the aspect of your internal your heart but that holiness brings out what you're going to do what you replicate or what you're going to serve others either it's your family or your friends so remember honoring christ is not always an easy task but living righteous he will lead you he will always be with you and to honor christ requires holiness and then you'll be blessed some people wanted to be blessed yeah but do not want to honor and live in holiness so there's another question for us we are we how do we see christ how we we we, we see him as our lord and our god and again peter remind always be prepared you know being prepared means that you're facing a lot of situation i did today tomorrow or another day you might not face trouble maybe one or two years or three years as a christian but when the time comes you face it why people who live in righteous sense what is not right people who live in righteous know that there is something not right in the situation you require the sensitivity and those sensitivity is when you kept holiness and we you live according to what god wants you to do and what again peter says prepared to make a defense you know if we talk about making a defense it's a tough thing yeah i know you're facing daily life meeting with friends yeah meeting with friends around or maybe in your workplace and i told you that we are the minor around here and to make a defense comes from the word apologia and whoever heard the word apologetics yeah i remember zeng was doing this program apologetics back before he's a lawyer yeah he's a lawyer so he was doing apologetics yeah it suits him and i know god will works in him yeah and to defend on the faith is actually apo means away logia is actually the logos the logical 
to keep something not logic, but put the logical in. So that is where it terms apologia comes, and it comes up to be apologetics. Always be prepared to make a defense. We are not defending our God, yeah? We defend our faith, our belief, and what God has planted us. And that is always what is in us. Why? Because you don't know if you live in righteousness, if I stay righteousness in God, in God I, and I obey Him, and I live holy according to what God's requirements, according to His standard. Of course, there is always hope. That is where the apologetic begins. If you see that, to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, that is the Christian life. That is the Christian identity. That is your DNA. I'm safe for a purpose. God saved me for a purpose. I don't come to church just to listen, yeah, to enjoy and see my friends. But there is a purpose that God wants to be in you. So if you see that there's a reason, no one comes to you and say that, hey, how are you doing? But you don't live so good, <laughs> you know. Or you don't really, you know, have a good, uh, good uh, interaction with others. Or do not even um, take your time to go for any community meetings of Christian. You know, why? They ask you because there is a hope. You know, when you speak about hope, uh, a few months ago, uh, not two months, two months ago, yeah, I was doing some of this, uh, we call it a community outreach program. And there was few, few, few people, you know, we were sitting in the car, I was driving up to Tutong. And sitting with me is actually myself as a Christian. And a person is uh, one of the majority religions here. And also one is a Buddhist. So we were talking in the car. Yeah, I let them talk. I let them talk. You know, they speak what they wanted to speak. I was enjoying listening. And then they say, and that comes across one thing. I like the story when we started to talk about um, Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Huh? Cain and Abel. I don't know how it started to make a defense of apologetics. And when that Cain and Abel to come a story, one of the majority person share with his, with convincing, yeah? He convinced me saying that, uh, you know why Cain killed Abel? I said, why? I was so curious. Why did Cain kill Abel? He said, because uh, Cain was jealous because the mother, Eve, bring him a beautiful wife. Wow, I said. <laughs> you know, even you ask the Sunday school, they would get lost, you know. They say that uh, Eve, bring uh, Abel a beautiful wife. I said, oh, that's good. I said, you know, uh, so quite, quite sarcastic. I said, that's good. They bring a beautiful wife. And what happened? I said, so he was angry that he killed Abel. And I said, from what source did you get? Oh, there is a book written by this, 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 this. Oh, okay. What source? I said, a book. Yeah, a book. Okay, a book. So a book means that someone can just write any stories. So I said, um, but... The Buddhism, yeah, the Buddhist lady did not have a story about this, but she listened. So I tell them, you want to hear my version? Yeah, they said, sure, okay. You know, when, when God created, I said, you know, there's Adam and Eve and things like this, and they have Cain and Abel. And what actually happens here, I said, Cain, uh, he, was, he was actually, um, uh, what do you call it, presenting God with crops, with what he have. Well, God accepted it, said. But God was not pleased with it. While Abel, he sacrificed a living, you know, a living animal. And that requires something. And so what happened that, I said? Well, when Cain said it, he was jealous, I said. Because God did not accept of his sacrifice. So in the next situation, I said, Cain killed Abel, I said can kill Abel. And I said, if you see the story, I said, that was the first killing that happened in humanity. 
at least in Genesis. I said. The first killing was started in Genesis. I said. And then that is where sin of murder came. I said. Then he started to listen. We go more further. And then I said, but what do you see the difference of your story and my story? Then he said that, um, I think they only pointed out the killing, the murdering. Then I said, no, the most priority thing is that you see you were talking about a woman, right? <laughs> a woman. But we are talking about God. There's a huge gap. I said, it's a very huge gap. Who do you prioritize first? I said, woman or God? Yeah, sorry. I know it's Mother's Day today. Every <laughs> I know it's Mother's Day today, but that came to the real story. Yeah? Happy Mother's Day anyway. <laughs> so, and I tell that, who you prioritize first? I said, is it God or the woman? Then the person answers to me, God. Then I said that, now you know the sense, I said. Now you know the sin. Yeah, I hope you know this, I said. My book talks about God more than what people is. The Bible speaks about God history. His. His means God. His story. No matter what it is, it's always God history. God story. So, and then from there, it built something in him. He started to be aware, <laughs> and the curiosity came. And he asked one of my colleagues, keep on asking about the Bible. And most of them are afraid, and one stood up the chance and make a defense on it. And I said that, be prepared as a Christian. You don't know that when the time comes, people will ask you, why? Because there's a reason. There's a hope as a Christian. People seek for hope in this hopeless world. Yeah? People always seek for hope when there is nothing more to be waited for. But remember, if you need to defend on something, it has to be in gentle and respect. We get offended, why? If we are not prepared. We get offended if we are not equipped. We get offended, you know, some people ask, hey, why do, why do Jesus have to be hanged? You know, when I was not prepared, I get angry. But now when they ask, let me come. Come to me, I'll tell you a story. I love to tell a story, you know. Suddenly, it started to be a good conversation. When you're prepared, when you're ready, you always, you know, defend your faith in gentle and respect. Why? Apologetics is always a building of faith. You know, where, while you're defending your faith, you build others. Remember, apologetics is not that you started to destroy others. You build others in another way. Yeah, some people say that I win the apologetics, but you build others. But in a certain sense, you condemn others. And if you are not prepared, you surely condemn others. You are not going to be the hope. Yeah? You are not going to be the blessing. Moreover, you are, you know, the bad thing. <laughs> yeah? So that's the thing. If you wanted to do those things, yeah, seek God. Live in righteous. Let God lead you in any circumstances. If we see here, hope is a gift of a spirit. It is a hope that through the atonement of Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection. You know, we just see how actually a remembrance of uh, God resurrection. And next week, this week, yeah, he'll be ascended. And in the few days, it'll be the Pentecostal. In gentleness and respect. While verse 16, having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who revile, uh, revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to a shame. You know, if you say that a Christian, not only you living righteous in God, being faithful, but to always have a good conscience. Some people said, oh, it's okay. Let the Holy Spirit lead. Yeah, I know. Holy Spirit will lead you. 
man is created in the image of God. And the image of God, God gives us few aspects. They are the aspect of righteousness. Through righteousness, you got con conscience. God gave you the aspect of power. But what did men do? They fall. They use it wrongly. And through conscience, they sin, and our conscience are not pure anymore. The aspect of righteousness is always a good conscience. So if you see that, always Peter reminds to have a good conscience. You know, we live in the world, we meet people. Now we are in the era of information everywhere. And people will keep on questioning you even they are not knowing it. Why? They are repetitions of what they see. Yesterday when I uh, go to Puchau, yeah, makan with my son, and then we check the menu, then he said to me, hey, pig pork is haram. I said, no, not to us. <laughs> you know? And I said, since when you say pork haram? Because my, it doesn't eat pork. Uh, my, my son doesn't eat pork. He said, because in the YouTube says pork, see your YouTuber, I said. If your YouTuber is not uh, a Christian, yeah, he said haram lah, I said. For us, no. You see how the media affects you. Pork is haram. I will never live without pork, yeah. <laughs> so if you see that, you know, if you talk about pork, then I say that my son, he's been with me, following my ministry, suddenly he said pork haram. It's just a few things that started to come to his mind from a source. Either it's from a YouTube he saw. It's haram. So I see that that's why Peter always says to have a good conscience. Why? If we see in the first Timothy 119, yeah, cling to your faith in Christ. Cling. Get close to God. Your faith in Christ. And keep your consigned, uh, conscience clear. So it shows that conscience can be clear and unclear. For some people have deliberately violated their conscience, as a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. Doubts. Part of conscience are doubts. I doubt Christ. People always, always doubt Christ. Until I saw one of my youth, uh, youth, uh, what do you call it, the, the, youth, uh, the youth student I was having, until he doubted Christ, he, uh, it's a he, he doubted Christ, and suddenly he turned into an artist. After I came back, yeah, recently I came back, and then I heard that he no longer go to church, he's an artist. Why? He see more the YouTubes, he see most of the information, and he believes what is on there. And he believed that when blessing is coming from what he has seen, you know, so he don't believe. But I hope one day God will always, you know, through conscience, God will work. God will always work. And then, why we need to have a good conscience? Peter said that, so that when you are slandered, it talks about false spoken. Why? False spoken. If you live in righteous, some around you are not comfortable with it. They will speak falsely. If you won't have a clear conscience, if you don't cling your faith to Christ, you'll get sway away. You'll get sway away slowly and slowly. You know, that's the thing that we need to be worried about. And also to be aware, why? Those who revile, those who criticize in abusive or insulting manner. I, we face those things, yeah? I believe you face those things everywhere you are. Yeah? Everywhere. You know, recently, someone came to me. Um, okay, this is a story. Um, someone came to me, and she asked me, hey, yeah, 
I said, oh, I said, interesting. I know the lady. I know the lady uh, married to one of my cousins, yeah, but they are divorced. To me, um, you know, we are not infidel. Why? Because I see my life is with God. Well, I'll see you at the infidel part. <laughs> then I know it, it is hurting, but in the end, they keep quiet. And my, my colleague started to keep quiet on my side. And then I said that before you speak, make sure you understand the word. Before you speak, because I have a God. And my God is here always with me, I said. And then, you know, the scenery, <laughs> the environment tends to be like everyone was keeping quiet. But in the end, it was part of declaring Christ. We are not ashamed of Christ. So my colleague, she's a Buddhist, and she just kept quiet. <laughs> and I said, it's okay, you know, you have to defend what is right. Don't be ashamed, I said. So when that word come, I started to say, in the Bible, it was written about infidel. And our Bible was written 6,000 years ago. It's a story about 6,000 years ago. Earlier than yours, I said. So they started to, uh, you know, started not to argue. And then at least they understand some certain things. I'm trying to be gentle. <laughs> at the same time, I'm also trying to defend what is the righteous of God. So if you see that, you might face those things, insulting manner. Your situation, your workplace, or either in your family, or you have a different backgrounds where you have family of two different beliefs, you always face those things. Well, even though in those situations, you live righteous in Christ, no matter what. Living righteous in Christ requires good manner, discipline, and faithfully. You being faithful, I'm sure you're in discipline. You live faithful, I'm sure you're in a good manner. Some can act good manner, but not in faithful. But if you're faithful, it comes into one. It's always comes to one. And whatever happened, if you see that good behavior in Christ, uh, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put into shame. Let God lead everything. Let God lead. Charles Pigeon says, the providence of God uh, is the great protector of our life. Providence means He will provide you. He will protect you. He will deliberate everything to you. And usefulness and under the divine care, we are perfectly safe from danger. So do not... Be afraid. Do not feel, you know, do not feel scared of what you're facing. That's what Peter started to, to, to share in this text itself. And in the last, last verse, it says, For it is better to suffer for doing good if that should be God's will. Two things around here. Doing good in any occasion for God's glory. Why? If we see Romans 11, 30, 36, it says, for from him, yeah, for from him, always from God, and through him, also through God, and for him are all things to him be the glory forever. So every occasion, as a believer, living righteous in God, everything comes from God. Totally God itself. It was never I, it was never me, myself, or we, but it's always God himself. And Christian priority is God's will. It's not ours. We are safe. And we are happy to be safe. Put that in your checklist. Yeah? When you have a checklist, put God on top. We call it default. Yeah? Or automatic. It's always there. Don't change it. Don't do manually. God is always first. <laughs> yeah. No matter what. So after God, it comes to your family. Either it's family, then it comes to your church, and it comes to your workplace. You put God priority, and He will lead the rest. 
in any circumstance, a circumstance, God will lead you. Let us have some reflection for today, of course. Before you started to defend or live righteous, of course, you face a lot of situation. As I told you just now, remember the context. We are living in a country, we call it um, with an MIB concept. Yeah. So you see the social, you see the historical, and you see the cultural. Then you see who you're facing. If you wanted to defend your faith, make sure you understand what is the situation here. And two, you ask yourself, for everyone in this, in this area, in this room, yeah, what is my life purpose? I'm safe. We just celebrated about the resurrection of Christ. And did you question yourself? What is my life purpose? Have I done enough for God? Have I repaid something? But apart from that, the question is, am I equipped? The church are here to equip you. The church are here always ready to help you in spiritual growth. I don't only come to church on Sunday, right? We have CG. We have other things around here. The church are a place for believers. Get equipped. And are we in Christ-likeness? If we live in righteousness with Christ, we live in Christ-likeness. We have that. But there's always a question mark. Are we? And to end it with implications, how to apply it, of course, put God first. If you want to live righteous, if you want to be a blessing to others, you have to love God first. You can't love your neighbor without loving God. Why? Last two weeks, there was a sermons about love. I was sharing that there was four types of love. They are agape love, they are eros, they are uh, philia, and one is torch. So if we love God, God give us the agape love. Unconditional. Through that, you love your brothers around you. Through that, you love people around you. Through that, you can testify about God. You can be a blessing to others. Or sometimes you say that, why I need to tell them? Because they are bad to me, you know, for example. No. If you love God, you love God first, and when that agape love fills you, no matter your brothers or no matter what you're facing, you will love them. You care for them. You pray for them. You guide them. And the application also, sola scriptura. Scripture alone. No matter what it takes, you have to read the Bible. The Bible itself. Yeah, remember just now, I tell you the story about me facing with the Adam and Eve story because he took from a different source, but I took from Genesis, the Bible itself. So if you want to talk about Goliath, yeah, you open your Bible first. <laughs> read the context, make sure you don't sway away because <laughs> the, the kids... They love to listen to any types of story. You know, false witness, call it. So remember, read the Bible. Understand the Bible. Let the Bible guide you. Immerse in the Bible itself. And the Bible is the living word. It will replenish you. It will cleanse you. It will change your mindset. And no matter what, let God lead. In any circumstances, to live righteousness in Christ, let God lead. That is the priority. That's the sermon for today. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for this, uh, for this time. Your servant has delivered the message, even that's a very basic and simple message to be presented, but we believe the Holy Spirit will guide us. The Holy Spirit will will go through our hearts, mind, and our soul. Prepare us, give us the wisdom, the understanding, so wherever we go, we are not unprepared, but we are always prepared. 
We lean on you. We hope on you because we are always out there defending our faith to testify God, to bring God's glory and to tell everyone that the only hope they have is only in Christ alone. Bless your church. Bless the congregation, the priests, pastors of the church. Let them guide this congregation according to God's standard, according to God's will. Thank you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Delphian. Uh, it was a simple but powerful message. Difficult to digest, like suffering for righteousness' sake. Yeah? Lord, have mercy on us. Yeah? All right. Let's arise. Let's read the Nicene Creed together. Ready, church? One, two, three, go. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and the Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Before we get on to our notices, I would like to uh, welcome our family members who have come and join us for the first time. Uh, Roslyn, Roslyn, she here from Bali, Indonesia. Give her a hand. Welcome, sister. May God bless you. And Mary, Sarah, Andrew, and Danny is written here. They're sitting in the upper sanctuary. She's there. Give her a hand. God bless you, sister. Please stay after church, have some time of fellowship with our hospitality team. All that. We'll get on to our notices now. Happy Mother's Day. Wow. Rise up and the children will say she's blessed. Yeah. So I give this time to Bishop Andy to take over this session. Blessed Mother's Day. No comments, huh? Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of Mother's Day, uh, Father's Day, but I think it's a day where we can appreciate people, and that one I like, when we appreciate people. So mothers, please stand. Mothers, grandmothers, spiritual mothers. Yeah, this is, a, this is a clearly a gender issue here, guys, okay? So no guys, huh? Okay, but we want to pray with you. But we, before that, um, the congregational team want to give you a small token a little incentive for your better half or your bitter half to take you for a meal. Uh, hopefully not a bitter half, okay? Hopefully by then reconcile already. Yeah, okay? Uh, it's a small token, uh, but we want people to uh, uh, appreciate, you know, uh, and have take that time to celebrate together. Yeah? Uh, our... Okay, so those standing up, okay, those who are not standing up, please, let's, let's pray. Let's pray a blessing. I want us to pray this blessing from Proverbs chapter 31. Yeah? Uh, proclaim this upon uh, the mother seated next to us, in front of us, or the side of us, okay, together. That she is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. 
She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you will do your word upon the lives of our mothers here, grandmothers here this morning. May this, may they be a blessing. May they, Lord God, be that example of the kingdom here in this land. So, Father, we proclaim your blessing upon them. We proclaim the blessing of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit upon them. Lord God, because that when we receive your blessing, it is much more profound than any man's words or any person's words. So we commit them to you. We pray that you continue to do your mighty work in their life, a work of completion, a work of perfection. Thank you, Jesus, for their lives, for the people that they've cared for. Uh, And we pray, Father, that you will just continue to uh, nurture them and lead them in all that is for your kingdom. We commit them to you, Father. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mothers, grandmothers, please be seated. Thank you. Back to you, Charles. Let's continue with the notices. Vanita Sumerlang. Did I pronounce it correct? (laughs) Yeah. So the location is there, St. Andrew's Church, 20th May, 7.15, Malam. And... uh, Pendaftaran, what is that? Application form. Uh, Two dollars. Yeah, the program will be in Bahasa. So better you learn Bahasa and you come there. Huh? All right, next one. Anglican Foundation Sunday. We could collect $511. Amount collected last Sunday, it was 7th May, across uh, six congregations for Anglican Foundation Sunday. Thank you for all who gave for this diocesan fund. Next one. SAC monthly church prayer meeting, no more Zoom. Yeah, 17th May, Wednesday, it'll uh, be happening in the upper room, 6 p.m. In-person prayer meeting, facilitated by CSC. 19th May, 2023, Friday, 7.30 p.m., parish AGM. It'll happen in St. Andrew's Church. Uh, it's usually held before or after Easter, but no later than the second Sunday after Easter. The PCC agreed to apply to the diocesan bishop for a postponement to 19th May 2023, which has been duly approved now. So today is the last day for nominations. So please uh, give your names. The forms are available from the church office. Five elected lay representatives, and it will be like one people's warden. So be there on 19th May. Become a volunteer, cool volunteer recruitment. Wow, please join us for the cool ministry. We need people. Contact person, Pastor Betty. Their numbers are there on the screen, Lydia. And this cool happens, first cool and second cool. First one, 8 to 9.30 a.m. And cool two from 10.15 a.m. to 12 p.m. So we need a yes from you. It's written there. Huh? Please come and volunteer and let the children be blessed in this ministry. Yeah. Calling SSE men and also women for volunteers needed for Boys Brigade. If you need any further information, you can contact Michael. Michael, where are you? Michael, you can ask him for more details. There are some contact numbers on the screen. Michael, Brother Gilbert, and Uncle Walter. You can contact them. And please, uh, volunteer. They need volunteers for Boys Brigade. That's all from the notice point of view. Let's arise for the final song and all, as well the offertory song. And this will be a closing song as well.
we thank you God for your provision God we thank you that you know what we need Father and today God we give back to you Lord for your kingdom Lord Father we pray Lord that what is given will be for the extension of your kingdom Lord for those who need it more Father Lord we also want to pray God as we leave this place Father we will do your works God we do your will Father ready to do your will Father may you be with us may you grant us genuine mercy and may you bless our week ahead Father Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you, church. See you all next week.